Good morning, church. Pastor Bill here. I'm going to be bringing you a word from the Lord that's been on my heart. And um, it's got a little bit of ground to cover this morning. So if you want to turn with me quickly to the book of Ruth and the Ruth's Gospel, what we're going to be looking at today is um, the Redeemer, being forced to face the Redeemer. And I love the book of Ruth. Her brother Raymond Lewis preached about it one time, and he said that, now, Ruth is the eighth book in the Bible, and eight the number eight to God means a new beginning, um, or no beginnings. So, you know, you had Noah in the ark. There was eight people. They, you know, God started over with a new beginning of people. And, uh, you have seven days in a week, and the eighth day being the new day. Uh, it was on the eighth day that a Jewish boy... When he was born into a family, he was not part of the inheritance until on the eighth day he was circumcised. And so it is kind of exciting to think about, you know, the eighth day or the number eight itself being something new. And uh, we're in the book of Ruth, so we're coming out of the book of Judges and we're going into the book of Kings, which is something new transpiring in the Bible. So it's a, a part of history. and. I love the way that God just puts the word together so uniformly. So we're going to be in Ruth chapter 4, and I just want to read to you a story, and I'll, I'll drop back and give you a little bit of the history of what had happened to get to this point. But in Ruth chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, uh, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou thy right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now this was the manner in the former time of Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing. To, uh, for to confirm all the things, the man had plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor, and this was a testimony in Israel. Therefore the kinsman said unto the Boaz, Buy it for thee, so he drew off his shoe. And Boaz said unto all the elders and all the people, Ye are witness this that, witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Kilion's and Malon's uh, and of the hand of Naomi. So what happened was we know the story about uh, Ruth, how that Naomi and um, Elimelech, the Bible says that they were fruitful people. That's what they were Ephrathites. That's what the word actually means. They were living in the land of Bethlehem, Judah. Uh, which is Bethlehem as being the house of bread. Judah means praised. And um, Elimelech means my God is king. Naomi, her name actually means pleasant one. So it sounds like, according to all the titles that we're hearing about, that they uh, were living right where God wanted them to be. He was a man who was praised, uh, living in the praised house of bread. His wife was the pleasant one, <laughs> that's worth a lot today. Uh, and then we hear, you know, in the scriptures that uh, they were Ephrathites, they were fruitful and bountiful. God was blessing them. Um, and his name actually meant, my God is king. So, but a famine came into the land. And it's just like the devil to throw a, uh, a stumbling block in front of us, uh, throw a storm or a uh, circumstance, or maybe even a, uh, uh, you know, a, uh, a plague like we're facing today or a sickness or a condition that we can't take control of and um, that is that is how he operates he likes to catch us off guard I guess you could say so he in that land there had come a famine and Elimelech and uh, his wife and two sons they went to down into the land of Moab now in the land of Moab which is where that uh, Ruth is from if you go back into history and you think about the time that Lot was down in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, God sent an angel and he led them out of that land of Sodom and Gomorrah. And of course, Lot's wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. And Lot and his two daughters continued on out of the city. And once they got out of the city, uh, they found themselves dwelling in a cave and looking down and all they could see was you know, uh, hellfire and brimstone destroying the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, probably thinking that God had destroyed the whole you know, existence, all of mankind. And the daughters took it upon themselves, you know, that they were all going to die. So they got their father a lot drunk and um, they lay with him in that cave and uh, they both became pregnant by their dad. And um, 
Moab is the first son who was born unto that, uh, the, the daughter who, who uh, the oldest daughter, I believe it was. And the word Moab actually means out of one's self, or today we can think of it as incest. So, you know, why Elimelech left the land of uh, plenty, you know, the house uh, of bread that was praised, you know, and went down, they were being fruitful, and then they went down into the, uh, the land of incest. Um, it's a downward plunge. So, but God had a plan in mind, and that plan was to find this woman whose name was Ruth and bring Ruth home. So Ruth ends up marrying one of Elimelech's boys, uh, Malon or Kilion, I don't know which one. But uh, they get married and, you know, they spend some time together there in Moab. And then the next thing we know that they get sick and then they die. And then Elimelech gets sick and he dies. Doesn't that sound familiar? Uh, we look around today and every, every it's, it's not just every day. It's literally every hour, sometimes every half hour. And the phone dings that you get an alert or an update. that uh, Everybody's grabbing their phones and checking to see uh probably 75% of the time now they've got to set for an alert on their phone that they can see, you know, what the count is, who is sick, who's infested now and who's, uh, been contagious, you know, um, and who's passed away, who's died. Um, very serious thing going on in the land today. We don't know what was going on in that, that, uh, time in the Bible. There was, there was death that came to him. And so we just about don't know what's going on today. So, Long story short, Ruth decided to go back home to Bethlehem, and on her journey back home, uh, she ends up taking, uh, or Naomi decides to go back home, and she takes Ruth with her. So when they get back to the home, uh, Boaz uh, finds something special in Ruth that catches his eye, catches his heart, and God had a plan all along. And the Bible says that he was going to take her to be his wife and uh, in order to do that he would have to redeem back Naomi and since Ruth was Naomi's daughter-in-law she also since she came back with her clung to part of that inheritance but Naomi was indebted to it now so we see here in the scriptures that what had happened was Boaz wanted to find out he said there's one that's closer than I am and he said, I have to go by him first. And uh, he told Ruth, he said, just be patient and hang tight. So he goes to his uh, near kinsman and calls a meeting where there's about 10 witnesses. They gather on the steps of a, uh, a city building there in Jerusalem somewhere. And Boaz lays out the, the facts to him. He said, Naomi, who is Elimelech's uh, wife, has returned. And in order for her to not lose her inheritance or Elimelech's inheritance, which uh, it was a law of Moses that they should always carry the seed of the name on and, um, and always carry that inheritance. And uh, he said, so will you redeem back Naomi? And uh, he you know, probably thought about it. That would just increase his uh, surplus. That would increase his earnings or his uh, his possessions. And then Boaz reminds him, and he says, now she brought back Ruth, and Ruth is a Moabitess. Uh, she's not an Israelite. And the near kinsman says, well, I can't do it then. It will mar my inheritance if I do this. I cannot you know, bring somebody into the family that's not of our bloodline. And, um, you know, that's a representation of the law. Um, you know, Israel is God's chosen people. Um, everyone else... Uh, the Jews are God's people, and then, you know, all the rest of us, we, we we have no hope without the blood of Jesus and without that Redeemer, that blessed Redeemer. The Bible says that Boaz said, well, if you're not going to do it, I'm the next in line. I'll redeem her back. So the custom was, and this is the story, this is the meat and potatoes of what I've thought about for the past week, uh, that the near kinsman took his shoe off, and he hands it to Boaz, and in essence, what he's doing is when he hands him that shoe, he's saying, I am the legal and the upright uh, kinsman. I'm next in line to do this job. It's my duty. I'm giving that to you. Boaz, here's my, my shoe. 
you have the right, you have the authority, and legally and in every aspect of the law, to walk and tread upon those possessions, that land. Uh, it's yours now. You are the redeemer. You can redeem them back. So when he gave him his shoe, he was saying, you are the, the redeemer. And uh, so that thrills my heart. And we all know that, you know, as we read there in verse, um, I believe it was verse nine. Yeah, verse nine, that Boaz said unto all the elders, he stood up and he made an announcement of it. You know, you're all witnesses. Everybody's seen this today. And he, he, he got it all lock, stock, and barrel legally. And he went to the Redeemer. And the Redeemer says, I, I'll redeem him back. And then he says he found out about Ruth being of an of a, a impure bloodline, an outcast, and, you know, being of the off scourge. He says, I nope, I'm not going to do it now. I'm not going to mar my inheritance. Boaz says, I'll gladly do it. She, the, the, that I will do that. And so uh, aren't you glad that Jesus for your sake and for mine when we are not and uh, uh, we never have been in our existence, been worthy of going to heaven to be with, with God's people, that Jesus made us worthy by the blood of the Lamb. Aren't you glad that we have that blessed Redeemer? And just to prove the fact a little bit more, go back into the book of Exodus with me. And this is the time, you all remember the story when Moses was there. There's a lot of songs we used to sing as children growing up. Me and my uh, siblings, we used to sing it about Moses and the, the burning bush and take your shoes off Moses for your own holy ground. And we sang those little songs. But in the book of Exodus chapter 3, it says that Moses turned aside. And uh, in verse 2 of chapter 3 in Exodus, he says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the flame of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned but with fire, but was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, that the bush is not burnt. And the Lord saw that he turned aside to see thee. God called him out of the midst of the bush. And he said unto Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. And God introduced himself, said, I'm the God of Abraham, father, and Jacob. And, and you know, what a meeting, you know, to, uh, I, I work in trees and uh, brush removal and stuff like that. And all the time, I'm always thinking about, you know, that story in the Bible. But it says here that he told him, he says, take your shoes off for the place where you are standing. Now, a lot of uh, Bible students, preachers and teachers uh, such get this confused and they want to... Uh, get to the point to where they it was the ground you know that they were saying that was hollowed or the ground it was uh holy at that time it wasn't about the ground it was who was there and it's, it's because god was there because god's presence came down into that burning bush now that is holy ground and um so wherever that the lord is that's where he you know takes up his abode at that time that's it, it's holy uh god it he exhorts holiness. He, you know, he excruciates it. He's just, uh, it, it's, it's what he is. It's his scent. It's his smell. It's his, um, it's his sound. Everything about God is holiness. And he told Moses, take them shoes off. And I believe that, you know, God somehow, and, and knows in, in forward in history that the Israelites would, you know, get to the point to where uh, they would take their shoes off to pass on redemption. He was telling Moses, you're not the redeemer. Give me their shoes. And, you know, the ground that you're standing on is holy because I'm here now. And I am the redeemer. Give me your shoes. Come on, Moses, give me your shoes. And, uh, boy, that just blesses my heart. And then what's been on, you know, uh, the upside of this week that I've been thinking about, uh, you know, seeing such a change, driving down the highway and seeing very few cars because of the quarantine and people being locked in. And uh, as I'm out there working and uh, it's like God is telling everybody to go home and take your shoes off for I'm the Redeemer. Give me your shoes. And when you're at home, you know, a lot of people, uh, some people don't, I guess, but that's that's just been on my heart. And I thought that was worth sharing with you this week. And if you don't think that this is an important uh, message this morning, uh, you're probably right. But I, but when I look into the Word of God, you know what I see. 
I see that when you go to Matthew chapter 1 and it talks about the lineage of Jesus Christ, that Boaz and Ruth are Jesus' grandmother and grandfather. So God had a purpose to let Elimelech go down into the land of incest, down into the land of Moab. And uh, whenever Naomi and Elimelech made that journey, they had no idea that, you know, the two boys would pass away, dad would pass away, and then Naomi would be left alone with her two daughters-in-law. And one of them decides to come back home, and she ends up being the grandmother of Jesus Christ. So we don't know uh, the impact of God's plan for us. And I believe the Bible says, you know, I, I have plans for you, and, and he certainly does for all of us. So I want to leave you with this thought while you're home and kicking your shoes off. And, you know, the weather here in Ohio yesterday was, was cold. The day before was beautiful. And uh, today the sun's shining and it's beautiful outside, but I don't know if it's cold or not. I ain't been out. But uh, you, uh, while you're at home and them shoes are off down through this week, you remember who the Redeemer is. God's, God's kind of saying, y'all go home, take your shoes off, because I'm the Redeemer. I'm the one that's going to you know, purge you, cleanse you from all your sin and your unrighteousness. And I love him for that, don't you? The simple fact that, that we have a Father we can go to. Church, we love you, and we're going to continue to pray and get through this. Um, you know, people have been asking questions about church and such like that, tithing and stuff. Listen, just do what Kim and I are doing. If on your tithing, just, you know, put it back each week, and when we finally get to go back to church, we'll turn them all in and uh, you know, be faithful to God and giving. And um, But... I can't wait to one day be able to open those doors and ring that church bell and let it ring through the cornfields and down through the hollers and get everybody back in church again. But uh, God bless you, and we love you, and, and uh, let's be praying for one another. We'll get through this. Love you.